Rebuilding a model steam plant, part 38. Mounting the steam manifold on the baseboard and making the exhaust condenser oil trap. Deciding where to position it on the baseboard and preparing the kit of parts. I haven't been able to do much work on this large steam plant for a while because literally I ran out of space in the workshop. I need to do something about this. I have two boxes of engines that were just left with me, potentially for repair. That was 10 years ago or thereabouts. And despite five phone calls to the customer and various emails, they're still here. I don't know what the legal aspect is regarding these engines, but I want them out of my workshop. The good news is the large 7.25 inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive is no longer on my bench, so I do have some space. I need to finish this steam plant in time for Easter, when a customer will be picking it up. What I'm doing in this episode is making the condenser oil trap and deciding where to mount it. The first job is to square up the end. Luckily, with the Smart and Brown, the entire piece of copper tube goes in the chuck. This job would not be quite so easy if the lathes were smaller. I deburred the inside of the ends of the piece of tube using a deburring tool and the outside using a file. In this clip it is sat in the approximate position where it's going to live on the plant. I'm going to make a special pipe fitting that goes from the condenser oil trap around the side of the boiler and then up the chimney. And for this once again I'm going to use some cast elbows from PM Research. I really like these things because they're not perfect, they look like they come from the steam age. Although the way this plant was originally, it was over piped. There were cast elbows and pieces of pipe just about everywhere. Luckily before I got it they'd been removed. I removed the original PM Research boiler and replaced it with a Stuart 501. And the original boiler that was fitted to the plant is on the floor in my workshop. There's nothing wrong with it, I just don't have much space. As usual, using my calibrated eye, I've marked the positions to take a couple of bolts to hold the manifold in place on the baseboard. I'm checking my calibrated eye with a ruler, and yes, it looks OK. I'm pretty sure that the two felt tip pen marks are in exactly the position I want them to be in. It's always a good idea, where possible, to drill pilot holes. And for that, as usual, I'm using a 1 8 drill bit in my Proxon motor tool. Then drill them clearance size for 2BA. It looks like it's going in crooked, but that's the camera angle, don't worry about it. After making a mess all over the baseboard, I thought it was a good idea to vacuum the mess away before it spread any further. I always keep my trusty Henry vacuum cleaner quite close to where I work. Unfortunately, I often forget to use it. And by tightening the two 2BA bolts, the turret is in the correct position. There are two holes in the baseboard, one either side of the turret mounting. One's been plugged, and I will probably plug the other one to make them match. I think it's time to screw the boiler down to the baseboard. I need to make sure the boiler is solid to the baseboard to make sure that when I fit the condenser when it's finished, it is fitted in the right place. I thought it was a good idea to fit a union nut and cone to the water gauge blowdown valve. It's pointless fitting a pipe because there's nowhere to pipe it to, it just looks better. Now it's time to make the base and cap for the condenser oil trap. This is a piece of 3mm brass. The first part of the job is to cut it in half, I thought it would be a great idea. Here I'm using the larger of my two bandsaws which just took ages to cut the brass. In the end, I cut it on the smaller bandsaw. Life is just too short to mess about waiting for things to happen. I ended up with two pieces just like this. One of them was cut square and the other one was cut round. This will eventually be the lid. It's only approximately round, but it's round enough. I'll show in the next episode how I make this perfectly round and also thread a hole in the centre of it. Here you should get the general idea. It's a round, non-removable cap and a square, non-removable base. This condenser is not a pressure vessel and it will be soft soldered together. No need to use silver solder here. This is something that could be quite interesting for some people, but for any proper engineers, it's possibly going to offend them. But as we all know, proper engineers should not be watching my tutorials. 
I marked a position on the vertical line which will become the exhaust outlet to the chimney hole. As you can see it's not at the top because the pipe has to match the bottom of the chimney fitting and the pipe will be fitted internally so that the outlet lets the steam out but not the water. Now I need another hole at 90 degrees to this and I mean accurately at 90 degrees. And how did I do it? Well, not in an engineering way at all. I could have fitted this into my rotary table. That would have been very accurate. I could have made marks at 90 degrees to each other. Or I could have fitted it back into the Smart and Brown's four-jaw self-centering chuck and marked the positions from the chuck jaws. But no, I did it using a ruler. When I checked after drilling, threading and fitting these temporary unions in place, both of the fittings were at 90 degrees to each other. I decided to make use of the excess of PM Research fittings that I have in a box. You can see how I've fitted an elbow on the inside to raise the outlet to the top of the condenser. You can also see I've fitted a PM Research cast T-piece, which needs another couple of PM Research 90 degree elbows, so the piping to the twin inlets of the T-piece will be at the right angle. I want them to point down. Externally, the T-piece and the elbows and the piping to the chimney will all be painted black. It should look OK. Here are the parts loosely assembled. So you should get the idea what it's going to look like when it's finished. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.